Welcome to the Blue Cafe, we bring you stories of faith, love, and devotion. Yeah, just kidding, please help us grow by hitting that like button. Now on to the story. My girlfriend of 3 plus years just threw pulled a 180 and ruined the perfect future I had planned. One of my best friends throughout all of high school, hung out with other friends pretty often and got much closer later on. Eventually, after high school, my parents wanted to sell the house so had to move out. I had been dating this girl for over a year at that point, and she and I decided to move in together. Fast forward a year, we did everything together. Multiple semesters in college, countless road trips, trips to meet my family a state over, a trip to Orlando, a trip to another country. Took her everywhere I could and we did fun things every weekend. We even got my first two cats together. We were the golden couple our friends looked up to, and my relationship with her felt extremely strong, I felt very emotionally dependent on her and she and always had comfort in the other. Very few arguments and the few small ones we had only ended in us becoming closer. There was no way anyone who knew us could have seen the following coming. It was indescribably surprising. Fast forward another year. To a couple weekends ago. I'm playing a game, Tarkov, chatting with friends while she's out with her friend, named Em that night I had plans with her, but she explained Em and her wanted to hang out spontaneously and I had no reason to object, though it felt off that she would blow off our plans of hanging out that night. No biggie. I trusted her and loved her with all my heart. She hadn't texted me for about two hours, so I asked how it was going. No response. 30 minutes later called her three times, no responses. This had me very worried as she'd answered every call in the last five years. I checked her location on one of our apps. Snapchat. It was off. Something I wasn't insecure about, but we'd both never had it off since we started dating. Now I was really worried, I wasn't sure if something had happened to her and the person knew to turn off location, or if she was lying about where she was. Eventually she answered my calls with a text, it's good in response to my how's it going baby. An hour prior. This was no good. I was pissed that she would so shortly answer my obviously huge worries. I spammed her, asking for a selfie, asking for an explanation of the missed calls and location being turned off. Short one word replies, five minutes apart, only made my mental state worse. Eventually I started asking for pictures of M. I was becoming doubtful she was telling the truth. She's in the bathroom. Okay show me when she's out. She has to go home. Eventually I asked what she was lying about. She told me she was actually with a co-worker. A guy. Wow. From there it was pure anger from me, and her telling me I didn't satisfy her or spend enough time with her. She admitted to being unhappy with me and told me she only stayed with me for financial and apartment security. I work two jobs, one every weekday from the morning to the mid-afternoon, while going to my classes. She usually worked afternoons to evenings, but regardless we hung out every single night. We spent every single weekend for years going out, watching movies, hiking, road trips, trying out new games, hanging with friends, cooking new foods together. Countless hours she apparently didn't appreciate, but never discussed with me. I got a new roommate to sign into my lease so she could be removed. We made up slightly, with no possible chance that I would stay with her, but after four to five days of sobbing and staying home from work, I had felt clear-minded for once and we even watched some shows together. I helped her pack her things and moved mine out of the way. Helped her load her car multiple times and we had some good times. Innocent, goofy, silly insults, messing around. Laughing. Just like we had our entire relationship. The morning she was supposed to finish packing, she asked that leave for one hour while her father was at our apartment. After lots of back and forth, she gaslighted me into guilt and I fell for it. I left for an hour, and our last four texts were the following. The, all out, left my keys at the front office. Me, say bye bye to Jay. The, yes. The, I love you. Me, 
Take whatever time you need to settle in and let me know how your apartment search goes smile I don't catch every call but I'll respond to every text. She then blocked me on everything, as well as all of my friends and any close mutuals we had. J was the cat we verbally agreed I'd keep, B was the cat she was supposed to keep. This was more than fair in my opinion. I returned home, and J, B, and many other items we agreed I'd keep and even paid her for some of, were gone. The person who destroyed my trust and destroyed our relationship, went a step further. She abused every ounce of good intentions I had put towards helping her despite the cheating. I'm still reeling from this betrayal, from the person who helped shape who I am as an adult. From my number one go-to comfort character for the last four plus years of my life. Legal action is being taken over the stolen cat. I'll eventually post an update and details I shouldn't post publicly yet, later on. I've lost a lot of weight and my psyche has been damaged immensely. Hopefully I learn from my mistakes, take consideration of the new red flags I've noticed, and don't let any similar issues arise again. But in the end, no matter what I did differently, she most likely would have done the same thing, and as long as I understand that I believe I can eventually find someone better for me. Over the course of the last 4-5 to five months, she destroyed my sex drive, over the course of the last year and a half I haven't spoke to a single female in any of my classes or previous female friends I had over text due to her paranoias. I respected this even though it caused some personal concern. I sacrificed so much in my life and covered her half of our payments multiple times. It was clear in our last few texts that I had no intention of cutting her off or hating her the rest of my life. This has destroyed me. I caught her cheating during the third week of August, 2022. Edit, sorry for the title, don't let it take away from the story though lol. Edit 2, wow. I did not expect this kind of reach and feedback on my reddit first post. I will be adding explanations further regarding why I was so worried about her lack of response. Most of the criticisms on my end are coming from this, so hopefully some context into the dynamic of our relationship will help this. I will also be posting the civil case updates as reasonably as I should, without a chance of hurting my odds. I absolutely appreciate all the feedback, comments, suggestions, advice, criticism, and even the jokes. It means the world to me to suddenly become involved with such a supportive community on a topic that has recently devastated me. Edit the 16th of September 2022, it's been rough, nearing a month since I caught her cheating. Every day is a 50-50 whether I feel like crap and I'm caught up in the past or self-doubts or feeling totally fine and focused on my classes slash work. It's come to my attention that her work closes at 7, and this isn't fast food or some sort of retail, but she was never home before 9.30, leaving me to believe she was spending time with this co-worker often, possibly every single closing shift, which would have allowed her to feel bold enough to bail on our plans and think I wouldn't find out. Any negative comments, or more so criticisms of myself came from my post including that I felt emotionally dependent on this girl. For better or for worse, I hope it's understandable that being close friends with this girl for over a quarter of my life, and spending most of that time dating her, half the time living with her, etc., definitely led me into a false sense of security. Having been with her my last couple teenage years and the first couple adult years, I don't see how it may be difficult to grasp that I really did believe and try with all my heart to make this relationship one of those high school sweetheart beginnings. And no, I wasn't trying to follow some stereotype or keeping false hope because we met young lol. I just truly felt like despite any disagreements, despite the sacrifices I made for her, that we were healthy in nearly every category that mattered. And with the issues we overcame, I never would have thought any disagreements of ours could stand the test of our relationship's time. I was not literally, desperately dependent on her for my emotions. But I always felt like I'd have her when I needed her, and I wanted her to know she'd always have me. When the person you feel this way about suddenly upheaves all of the progress and time you shared with them, well, as many of you know even better than me, it's devastating and detrimental to the optimism I've had my entire life. 
Court updates. Complaint filed and constable paid, evidence printed of our verbal agreement and its violation. The constable has contacted me to inform me that her working location is refusing to allow them to speak with her. There is one attempt left, and then I need to dive into a special service request or hire a private summons. Either way, the costs will be added to the suit. For my general outlook of the case. I feel extremely wronged, and it is undeniable that a crime was committed against me, with the intent to spite me, and for her own selfish desires. I had a friend over, my new roommate, during one of the days before the theft of my belongings and pet, and the three of us discussed who was keeping what, and who would keep either J or B, the cats. I have his written and notarized statement ready for use in court as damning evidence that she and I had a verbal agreement, one that she violated obviously. Physically, she took both cats and multiple of my items, and in the last four texts between the two of us, is usable evidence. That being said, myself being financially stable and responsible, I'm basically allowing whatever process needs to take place out of my wallet, knowing that winning the case would mean any court-related costs are then awarded to me. This is simply a waiting game, and by now she knows I'm not bluffing or simply going to give up and let this bane keep my loving cat, and I am inquiring into the possibility of taking both back though I'm not sure what the odds of that are as it's not requested in my formal complaint. Lastly, for now. The extreme amounts of support both in the comments, and in my DMs, has given me countless smiles and overall helped my confidence both in moving on and I pursuing the case, though too much alone time lately always leads to negative reflection and utilizing my 2020 hindsight. I appreciate everyone who took time to read this situation, and though I wish this wasn't posted on TikTok, for the sheer fact that I've had a friend even ask me about it, referring to the video, I absolutely have no regrets sharing this. I felt like I needed a place to vent about the last few weeks and this was definitely a safe place to do it. Thank you all. More updates court wise coming soon. Edict the 20th of September 2022, made a new post in this sub. Explains really the conclusion of this entire debacle. Uh, I love you. Sounds like my most recent ex. I'm convinced some people don't know what that word means. It was crazy. Her saying that and me fighting not to say it back. Glad I didn't. Got home and my pet and belongings were stolen. Skeptical. What belongings? Nothing serious. My rice cooker, air fryer, rugs, my towels, remotes, my medicine cabinet was raided, all our cat supplies, our split PS4, a bunch of sentimental stuff was left, and some things we agreed I'd keep were taken, and I had given her about $800 to cover things she took anyways, since I kept the furniture and some more expensive items. I profited overall but still an unnecessary blow. The cat is the majority of what bothers me. When her new man cheats on her, she look at that air fryer and realize she did it to herself. The air fryer. Nothing serious. Uh, plots of that stuff are expensive. You are to forgiving emo. I am. I know I am. It's just who I've been my entire life. It's how my cat got stolen. It's something I need to work on. I've always been an optimist, and this situation has crushed that. Part 2 slash update, my cheating ex who ruined our plans and stole from me on her way out. Check my other post in this sub for context. I've been speaking to a therapist since the week all of that had happened. I got to admit, my whole life I'd never really seen the point in one but having someone to speak to who knows how to effectively reassure you it's a nice way to take some of the mental stress off your shoulders. Fantastic news. Today, only 10 days since I made the original post, absolutely a huge turnaround. I had filed the civil suit as I intended, and paid for summons. Traditionally, you get three summons attempts before you need to move on to more expensive yet thorough means of serving someone civilly. The first two attempts were wasted on her working address. The constable was told both times promptly to screw off, and that they had no clue who the constable was referring to. 
The third and final traditional attempt, had the constable head to the father's house of my ex. Being the reasonable man I know he is, which is why I allowed her to be in my apartment in the first place thinking he'd be there the whole time, he contacted his daughter regarding the constable and out of good conscience and for his daughter's financial well-being, explained to her that she needed to meet with the summoner and find a way to get this case dropped, because it was clear she would not win, once served. The constable called me earlier today, the 19th of September 2022 to inform me that she had been served. She promptly reached out to me, for the first time since telling me she loved me, and that she had told my cat goodbye, and that all of her things were out of the apartment. She essentially asked what it would take to have this case dropped, as she definitely could not afford more than the money plus pet return I wanted. I explained my demands, and she asked for a couple things she had left here. Laptop, some clothes. I agreed to drop the case, after I am paid and have everything stolen returned, including my beloved cat. Sure, I could have denied her, and dragged her through months and months of court, at the end of which she'd most likely have to pay all of my fees on top of hers, as well as these demands. I in no way or manner forgive her at all. But I don't have it in my heart to ruin someone's life as badly as this financial situation would do to her. I feel it is much healthier and says a lot more about me that I'm able to settle this ultimately outside of court. I will never speak to her again outside of this exchange. Yes, she will be paying for all of the fees and time I've put into this case already. I am so unbelievably excited to get my cat back. Even though she deserves every little bit of what I planned through court, I'd like to move on as fast as possible and not be legally involved with this horrendous human being for up to a year longer than I need to be. You picked the right resolution to this issue dragging it out wouldn't have benefited you mentally time to move on. Now you have to pay the cat tax. Ha ha what's the cat tax? When it doesn't work out with the co-worker she will 100% be contacting you. Users like her always come back. Finally two weeks ago, two weeks after having my cat back, I finally blocked her on absolutely everything. He broke up with her this week's smile. We hope that by sharing these stories with interested folks like you, we can help people recognize the signs of a relationship in trouble, and avoid so many of these heartbreaking situations yourselves. Have a good day or night. Wherever you are.